to our presentation here at Del Sol Community Wellness. My name is Kirk Shaw. I'm a licensed massage therapist, uh, graduated from IBMC College in January of 2021. Uh, I'm an employee here at Del Sol Community Wellness at Massage Heights. Uh, I was a high school and college athlete. Right now I'm currently a semi-professional athlete. Um, and I also coach middle school football and basketball, which is a big reason why I wanted to talk about kind of muscle physiology and working out. In this presentation today, like I said, we'll be talking about muscle physiology, what a muscle is, how muscles are being affected while working out, getting the most out of your workout for your sport, and then types of athletic training and kind of a timetable of that. Um, so there's three different types of muscles, smooth, cardiac, and skeletal. I highlighted and bolded skeletal because that's the main muscles groups we'll be focusing on today. Um, so basically the characteristics of a skeletal muscle is it makes up 40 to 50 percent of your body weight and there's more than over 400 skeletal muscles in your body. Um, their main purpose is they attach to tendons, to bone, um, in charge of moving muscles and helping your body keep you upright. So basically the easiest way to do that is, I'm going to use a bicep muscle as an example, but you have your bicep tendon connected at the bottom here of your bicep, connected to your radius. So in order to move this radius muscle, you got to move your tendon, and that's connected to your muscle and bone here. So that's basically, um, as it shows here, kind of move it like that. And then skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles, so you have to think about moving them before you move it. So I got to think about doing this or doing this, and that helps just, that's basically all your skeletal muscles have to move that way. Um, the myosomes, there's three parts of it, the epimyosome, perimyosome, and endomyosome. The epimyosin, as you can see here, just covers your whole muscle. The paramyosin just surrounds muscle bundles of muscle fibers. And then the endomyosin in here surrounds individual muscle fibers. As you can kind of see, they pulled this out. So that would be your endomyosin thing. So. Uh, myosin and actin are your biggest parts of muscle fibers. So the definition of that is just a fibrous protein that forms the con or the contract alpha filaments of muscle cells. So basically it just helps your muscles contract and uncontract. Um, how they work together is myosin always stays the same length and then actin is what is what slides over myosin. So if your muscle's at full length here, again the bicep muscle, it'd be like this. And as I bring this muscle to contract, the actin just slides over the myosin. So that's just the easiest way to explain how muscles contract and uncontract. Um, as you're working out, coming kind of back to that myosin and actin, so anytime you do a workout, it's called like muscle resistance. So any workout that's causing more resistance than you're used to in just your average day is causing muscle resistance, which basically is making myosin and react actin break down and it's causing little microfiber tears in your muscle, which is totally normal. But basically what happens there is you're creating more myosin and actin, so that's what makes your muscles look bigger is more myosin and actin building up on top of each other, creating more muscle layers. Um, and then, depending on those microscopic tears is the severity of your workout. So the harder you work out, the more tears you're going to have. Um, the lighter your workout, not as many tears. Um, with that also, so the more your workout in intensity-wise is the longer it's going to take to recover as well. Um, so getting the most out of your workout and your sport, um, during the off-season, I always tell my athletes that's the time to bulk up. Like I said, the more intense your workouts are, the longer your recovery is, the more of those microscopic tears you're going to have, the bigger those tears are. But this is the time to lift smart heavy, I say, because you don't want to just go and outlift what your body could do, but you do want to lift a little bit heavier than what your body could do. Um, this creates smaller reps, smaller sets, kind of. Um, this is when you want to set PRs, so personal records, you know, break records. If your bench press is only 150 pounds, that's when you want to try and go for 155. Once you get 155, go for 160, stuff like that. Um, cardio, it's a big time to do cardio. Um, longer runs, get your heart. Your heart is also muscles, so you also got to keep that building. Um, with that, tendons always stay the same length, so that's why I always say do this in the off season, because if you're trying to get your biceps bigger, your biceps tendon is only this big, so as your muscle grows, your tendon gets, like, it's staying the same length, so it's got to cover more ground. So if you try to do bulk up during the season and you do that three days before your event, that's how you're going to get tears and stuff because your body's not used to that or it's not recovered enough well enough to do that. 
Um, in the season, I always tell my athletes to stay in shape. Um, lighter weights, more reps, more sets. So if your bench press max is 150 pounds, I always tell them to keep it at 100, 110 max. You know, just keep your body and your muscles strong, but also don't overwork them. Do more resistant band type workouts. That way you, 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 you're using your own body weight um, and you're not really putting more damage on your muscles than needed. Um, shorter cardio workouts, some more sprints. So if you're a swimmer, like lesser timed laps or shorter laps. Um, pre and post season, I always say about that's about average of two to four weeks, depending on how your muscles feel, how your muscles feel, how your body's feeling, any injuries or anything like that. But this is a big time to keep stretching, do more yoga, um, and kind of just very lightweight. Again, resistant bands are great for pre and post workout. Um, stretching and yoga are a big part because it helps lengthen those muscles back out to the original length. Um, during your season, you know, you're just beating your muscles up. They're pretty sore, they're pretty beat up, um, a lot of tears and stuff. So this will just, stretching and yoga kind of help just bring those muscles back to a healthy form and just kind of lengthen them back out. Um, recovery wise, so when your muscles are sore during any off season or in season or even if right after before or after your season is any time is a great time for recovery time. But massage is a big thing, it help, helps lengthen those muscles back out to the original length just like stretching and yoga does. But this way we can get um, trigger points out when we can find those taut areas. Um, hydration just helps muscles recover faster. We always tell our clients just drink water, water, water. If you think you're drinking enough, you're probably not. You gotta drink more. Um, electrolytes and magnesium. Magnesium kind of goes in with electrolytes because magnesium is the biggest electrolyte people are missing it in their body. Um, this um, just also helps with muscle recovery. And with electrolytes, everyone thinks of Gatorade, but that's just like sugar with electrolytes. But this is more like Pedialyte or magnesium spray or um, anything like that. And then also stretching, it just helps lengthen those muscles out again. Um, if you do any of these four things, like off season, in season, any time is the best time to do any of this stuff. Um, if you have any questions about this presentation or any questions at all, feel free to email us at hello at delsoulcommunitywellness.com.